so this is a graphical aspect of this experiment okay remember that question number one say assume that t and l are related by the equation they say assume that t and l are related by the equation t equals to a l raised to the power of c and now they say where a and c are constant transform the equation by taking log of both sides to obtain t equals to c log l plus log a that was the question now i want to start to transform it so that we we'll know what we are doing in this equation we said that this equation obey simple pendulum equation where c theoretically is equal to 0 0.5 and a theoretically is equal to 0 0.0.202 seconds. That is about theoretically. I'm just giving you the expo. I'm just giving you the expo so that you'll be aware. And with this information, we were able to use it to do our calculation, so to speak. To transform this equation now, you take the log of both sides. Why are you taking the log? So as to bring, this is so as to bring out this power of C. So as to bring it down. And how do you do that? You say taking log of both sides, we have that log T equals to log what? A, a raised to power of C. Everything will be in bracket. Then applying addition law of log reading, we'll be having that log t will be equal to log of a log of a plus log of what l raised to power of c that is how it's plated and so because there is log beside this l raised to power of c this c will come down and we'll be having that equation to go this way log what t equals to when c come down it becomes c log what l plus this one log a we are just what transforming it by writing this first before this obeying the commutative law of what multiplication and addition what i mean by commutative law of commut um, multiplication and addition is that a mathematics, if they tell you 2 plus 3, it is something as 3 plus 2. So, log A plus log L raised to power C, it is something as log L raised to power C plus log A. That is what I mean by commutative law of what? Addition. Okay. Remember that we said T equal to A, L raised to power C. We said it in the starting of the experiment when we wanted to make this table of values. And we said that it is obeying that simple pendulum equation that said T equals to 2 pi root l over g where when you transform it to this form we have c to be equal to 0 0.5 and a to be equals to 4 pi square over g for okay a equals to 2 pi over root g if i'm not making mistake we say a is equal to 2 pi 2 pi all over root g. And we pick our g to be 970 cm. We'll plug it here and it's giving you 0 0.202 seconds. The unit is in seconds, so to speak. That is about theory. Because you understand the experiment very well, that is why you note all this. But you are noting it on your mind. You don't just write it down until you are done with your word experiment i just want to let you know so that you will not forget what i said in the starting of the words this experiment please note this yes that is about theoretical then if you want to commence the graphical aspect of a plotting of graph then you need to know that you write the date first and write the title of the graph a graph of what? A graph of log what? T against what? Log L. Remember, they have no units. Then, label here to be log what? T. 
T and label here to be what? Log L. Yes. Then, before you do your graph plotting, also remember that you need to add all these values. Add this. This plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this, then minus this. Whatever it gives you. You divide it by how many they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So divide it by seven. You'll be getting what? Zero point what? One, three, what? Four. This plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this. Divide it by seven. You also get what? 1.658. This will be taken to be coordinates of the word centroid. Coordinates of the centroid. And that is what I located here. I decided to choose this scale this way because the question demands that we should get the intercept. We should get the intercept. And we need to make sure that the scale we use is such that we will be able to get the intercept clearly. I get what we are saying. And so I started to use the scale this way. What scale did I use? The scale goes this way that scale on the word log t as is, log t as is. We have that 2 cm. 2 cm means from this zero to this point. Like this is about 1 cm, 1 cm. Each of these big, big bus is about 1 cm. One cell because they are small, they are small. So if you merge it to get the two cm, two cm represent what? Zero point two unit. No unit. Don't put any unit of the log. It doesn't have any unit. Then for log l as is, we say two cm also represent what? Zero point two unit. Okay, so we have that. That scale is very, very important. You don't forget that. Let's locate our points. This is 1.9. 1 1.9, this is 1.8, this is 1.9 against what? 0. Point, this is approximately to 0. 0.3. 0. 0.3 is here. That is how we located this. 0 0.2 in one decimal place, 0 0.2 against 1.8, 5. 0 0.2, this is 1.8. 1.85 will be in between 1.8 and 1.9. This is 0 0.2. Then we now say again, 0 0.2 again. This is the one decimal, 0 0.2. Or oh, look at 0 0.19 against 1.8. Look at 1.8 and look at that 0 0.19. Are you getting it? Then 0 0.155 against 1.7. Look at 1.7, 0 0.155. In between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Then 0 0.1 against what? 1.6. 0 0.1 against 1.6. 0 0.045 against what? 1.48. 1.48, 0, 0 0.0. In between 0 0.1 and 0. You have it. Then minus 0 0.0046 is get 1.3. In between, look at 1.2, 1.4. So 1.3 is here. And in between 0 and 0 0.1, you have this. Then the centroid, 0 0.13 against 1.66. 0 0.13. Look at 0 0.1. 0 0.13. Against what? 1.3. 1.6. Look at 1.65 or 1.66 is there. So we have located 1.66 against 0 0.3 or uh, 0 0.13. Look at 0 0.1 in uh, approximation pattern. Now you need to also note that. You need to also know that this is just a sketch of graph. When you use a standard wire graph or standard graph sheet, and you're able to put this scale the way we put it, do your plotting. You'll be able to get your exact value, so to speak. Okay? So, we now locate our line of best fit. 
remember that the line of best fit, why we are getting the centroid is to make sure that the line of best fit pass through that centroid. If the line of best fit do not pass through the centroid, that is a wrong line of best fit. So this is our line of best fit, this line. And so to get our slope now, I will get my vertical. You use your ruler to get your own. And get my horizontal. So my slope is going to be what is change slope equals to change in log what t all over change in log what l. What is change in log t? Highest point here is 0 0.15. 0 0.15 minus minus here is minus 0 0.4. So 0 0.4. I put this minus because I know that the lower part is at the word minus 0 0.4. All over this one, where the vertical and horizontal intersect, trace it 1.7 minus what? 0 0.6. Are you getting it? So once you are done with that, you'll be able to get your slope. Let's use a minus times minus is plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.4 divided by bracket 1.7 minus 0 0.6. That is 0 0.5. You have your slope to be equal to 0 0.5. What is your intercept? Your intercept, go to your y axis. Where does it cut your y axis? Look at it. It's cutting your y axis as minus 0 0.7. You say minus 0 point what? 7. No unit for intercept and no unit for slope, so to speak. Are you getting it? Because your intercept is located at log t as and log t as is does not have any unit so to speak so we have gotten our slope and we have gotten our intercept now how do we get error in slope and error in intercept that is another information so this slope we got is gotten from slope of line of best fit and this intercept is intercept from what line of best fit where it meets your vertical axis now how do we get the error in slope and error in intercept to get the error in slope and error in intercept we need to also what go and locate that our what our centroid when we locate our centroid those points that fell out connect some of those points that fell out with the word centroid so i'll be connecting them now I'll be connecting them now. Please bear with me. Exercise patience as we do the connection. So, as you can see, I've connected another line with this centroid that is from with this point that fell out with these two points that fell out are you getting it and look at the centroid once you locate that centroid you put it in a circle okay so as i've connected them now as I've connected them, I will have to also note the slope of this word, line of words feet. Look at how it pass. Okay? I will now look. I can say, let me connect it like this. Okay. So you'll be having that here, our slope is going to be, you get the vertical own, then get the what? 
or is um the the lower part of it. So the slope of what feet is equal to so the higher is what minus minus zero point one minus the lower is what minus zero point five all over this is what one point two minus this is what zero point two so we also bring a calculator to compute that you will be having that minus minus is plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1 divided by this minus this will give you 1.0 divided by 1 that will be giving you 0 0.4 we'll have it to be 0 0.4 that is the slope of what was fit and what is the intercept the intercept meet your y as about 0 0.06 so its intercept of what fit is equal to minus 0 0.6 we note this we know this this is about the 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 best fit and this is about the worst fit so once you're able to get the slope of the worst fit and the intercept of the worst fit you have to tell them that in conclusion my slope will be equal to slope plus or minus 0 0.5 this one of best fit minus one of worst fit 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 that will be giving me 0 point what one no unit it's a standard what hello se so our slope is 0 0.5 plus or minus get the difference or get what you will uh, the value of the one of best fit minus one of what it once you minus it will give you negative take the positive value of it it will give you positive take the positive value of it the answer must be what positive what am i saying in essence what i'm saying in essence is that when you are talking about error in slope error in slope error in slope is equal to modulus of what slope of best fit minus slope of worst fit so when you what minus them modulus means if you get negative forget about negative but if you get positive the answer should be in positive side so the best fit is 0 0.5 and worst fit is 0 0.4 you subtract same with error in intercept error in intercept error in intercept equals to intercept of best fit minus intercept of worst fit you subtract it minus 0 0.07 minus 0 0.7 minus minus 0 0.6 that will be giving you minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.7 minus minus 0 0.6 that will be giving me what minus 0 0.1 because of this modulus forget about the minus you have in that 0 0.1 so it will now be equal to what 0 0.1 forget about the negative sign because our error in slope shouldn't be in negative. That is what it means. Therefore, it means that our intercept, it means that our intercept is minus 0 0.7 plus or minus 0 0.1 standard error, so to speak. Remember, this is our date, date of experiment, and this is the title, this is your scale, okay? So we've been able to get our slope, our intercepts, our error in slope, and our error in what? Intercept. Then the next question is, we should measure the constant C and A. Remember that when we are getting our slope our in, and our intercept, they didn't 
tell you to get the error in slope and error in intercept. You are the one that will do it by yourself. Whenever you are getting your slope and you are getting your intercept, try to get the error in that slope and error in it and attach to it. It has its own mark. And so have it to your mind, so to speak. So to get the to answer that next question of measure the value of C and the value of what? Uh, A. So what do they mean by that statement? When we talk about log what t equals to c log a, uh, c log l plus log what a, the implication is that when you compare it with y equals to what m s plus c, m becomes your slope, that is your c. Because when you plot y against x, m will become your slope. So when you plot log t against log l, c become your slope. So m is equal to c, log a is equal to dc. Let's use a different letter. Equals to k. Where k is your intercept. Okay? So how do we get a value for c? The constant c automatically is the value of your slope. The constant C automatically is the value of your slope. So C, which is your slope, is equal to 0 0.5. Because that is what we got. Then, for the error in slope, we have already gotten it. The error in slope is equal to plus or minus 0 0.1 standard error. You see the need why, whether they ask you or not. Once they say, find your slope, once you get your slope, Attach the error in it without being asked. If uh, if you are fortunate that they ask you the error also, you are still on a good side. Now, what do we mean by what? Find the error in what? Find the A and error in the A. Now, this intercept is log A. We say log A is equal to what is your intercept minus 0 0.7. Log A is minus 0 0.7. What will be your A? A will be shift log of what? Minus 0 0.7. That means A is take the anti-log of minus 0 0.7. An anti-log of minus 0 0.7 will be equal to 10 raised to the power minus 0 0.7. And that will be equal to 0 0.2 approximately. 0 0.2. So we have been able to get our A. From our work experiment, we well, have succeeded to get our A. Then, how do we get our error in A? Error in A is different from error in intercept. How do we get our error in A? Remember that we got our A by anti log, anti log formula. That is 10 raised to the power minus 0 0.7. 10 raised to the power minus 0 0.7. Are you getting it? That is how we got our error, um, our value of A. Now, our error in A, error in A, in A, is equal to, you write 2.303, please, this value is constant, times the value of your A. What is the value of your A? 0 0.2 times the value of your error in intercept. What is the error in intercept? Error in intercept is 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Do you get the gist? 2.303 times 0 0.2, which is the value of A. Then times 0 0.1, which is the value of error in the word intercept. That is your error in A. 2.303 times what? 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. And that will be giving you 0 0.05 equals to 0 0.05. That means our A is equal to 0 0.2 plus or minus what? 0 0.05. That is just it. 0 0.2 plus or minus 0 
do you get what we are saying plus or minus 0 0.05 that is just it that is how to get your error in words a since we got our a by anti-log method yes okay so we have succeeded to get our a and the words value of error of it in some textbook or in some research work you may not see this 2.303 and you will see it that error in a is equal to 0.2 times 0.1 you just see it direct so if you are going by that it will also give you that a equals to 0.2 plus or minus 0.02 yes now this your a has unit why because where you got it from is from log t and t is in second but log t has no value but when you are getting the value of t by anti-log now it becomes in seconds so your a is also in second your a is also in second please don't forget that so all these things we got here is the same thing as you writing it in second so a equals to 0 0.2 plus or minus 0 0.05 se seconds second then you attach se that is standard error that is same thing you write here a equals to 0 0.2 plus or minus 0 0.02 seconds attach what se the implication of this information is that if you solve by saying error in a equal to 0 0.2 times 0 0.1, you are still on a good side because you do not know this. No problem. But if you also say 2.303 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.1, that is this times the error in what? Intercept. The error in intercept. That is 2 point times value of a times error in intercept. That is what we have. You have this. If you do not know about 2.303, just say 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. No, you are still on the track. So you just say 0 0.2 plus or minus 0 0.02 seconds, seconds, seconds. And you attach what? Standard error by the side. So that is how to get your what? C, your A, your slope, your intercept, the error, and all have you. Okay? Okay, to answer question number six, what aspect of the setup is the constant A likely to depend on? Wow, as we are about to answer this question, but have in your mind that we can answer a lot of questions from this experiment. What can it probably be asked to deduce the acceleration due to gravity of that experiment or gotten from that experiment? Let me tell you, remember we said when we are driving the formulas that k is equal to k is equal to 2 pi all over root g we drive this we show this while driving the formula how we got this it is from solving this t equals to 2 pi all over root g then square root of l that is 2 pi root l all over root g there is a formula in simple pendulum that discuss this okay and we said that this means t equals to 2 pi root all over root g l raised to power of what c where your c is this square root sign you are seeing which is equals to what 1 over 2 as a power okay that means that when you plot a graph when you plot this graph we will be saying that k is equal to 2 pi over root g. I also said that the slope is equal to 1 over 2, that is 0 0.5. We discussed this before now. Okay, now, since we have gotten our k to be equal to 2 pi over root g, right? We said that in that experiment, our k is noted to be our a equals to 2 pi all over root g. What is your a? We got it to be 0 0.2 equals to 2 pi over root g. That means if I'm making root g subject of formula, I'll be having 
root g equals to 2 pi all over 0 0.2. Therefore, if I remove square root here to make g subject of formula, I will be having, I will, if I remove square root here, I will square this to give me 4 pi squared all over, I will square this 0 0.2 squared. That is the value of your g. Oh yeah. Now, 4 pi square all over 0 0.2 square. That should give you what? Use a calculator and set 4 shift pi squared divided by 0 0.2 squared. 986.96. That is approximately what? 987 centimeter per second squared. Yes, because we said the unit of 0 0.2 is in second. So second square. This one centimeter. 987 centimeter all over second square. That means I can deduce acceleration due to gravity from this experiment. You see the reason behind we using 970 while trying to what drive our table of values. We say use 970 because after approximations and everything will be done, you'll be getting 980 or 980 something, which is the actual acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Yes. So we are getting a 987. You can imagine if we had used 980 straight away, you will be getting about 1000 or 990 old, and it is getting fast a bit depending on amount of approximation you did. So you can use this experiment to get acceleration due to gravity, so to speak. Okay, have that information in your mind. In case someone also asks you, why doesn't this graph pass through the origin? You try to tell them that why it did not pass through the origin is because of um, a possible human and experimental error that are what encountered during the what experiment you know when you are performing experiment as an imperfect human being you can make mistake and either mistake from you or mistake from the instrument you are using that will make everything not to work pass through the world origin so to speak so in case they ask you that say that it is due to human and experimental error encountered in the experiment that is why it did not pass through the world origin because this is a simple pendulum word uh, graph or experiment so to speak okay now going to that question number one which says we should do what what aspect of the setup is the constant a likely to depend on first of all what is a a as we derive we say a is 0 0.2 seconds right that means a is talking about periodic time. This A represents periodic time because we got it from log T as is. Periodic time. So A is your periodic time. And every period, period depends on a lot of things. One, it depends on length, length of the thread. Because we use thread in this experiment, that thread used to hold that word, meter root, so to speak. It depends on the length of the thread. It depends on the mass of the ruler. It depends on the length of the thread or the mass of the ruler. Also on the strain constant, K. Strain constant means the thread constant. In this case, thread will be our strength because that is what we use to hold that word, meter rule. I get it. And it also depends on acceleration due to gravity of that planet. This can be proven from this formula 2 pi root what L over G. That means it's dependent on this. And from this equals to 2 pi root what M over K. You see that it depends on length of the root, length of the thread, acceleration due to gravity, mass of the ruler, and on the strain constant. And this is how they are related. And this is one of the formulas we note in the word phases. So the what aspect of the setup is the constant A likely? So constant A is likely to depend on length of the thread. It also depends on acceleration due to gravity. It also depends on the mass of the ruler. So it also depends on the strength constant. Strength. Let me write it. Strength what? Constant. Strength constant. Strength constant. Please don't forget that. 
Then another thing we need to also talk about is what is the unit of A if the relation has given above is valid. Indeed, it's valid because we can see it in our equation. It is a valid experiment. And so unit of A is going to be in seconds because it's talking about time, periodic time. It is in seconds. Also note that. Guess any practical application um, of this setup in nature. Wow. In nature, there is what we call seismometer. Seismometer. Look at this. Seismometer. What does this seismometer, what is, is an instrument, what is it used for? It is used to detect and measure seismic waves. That is what we call seismic waves. Seismic waves. So it's used to detect and measure seismic waves and earthquakes. So we use this experiment to do that, to measure seismic waves and what? Earthquakes. Another application of this in nature is that it is also used in physics education to demonstrate periodic and harmonic what? Motion. It is used in physics education to demonstrate periodic and harmonic what? Motion. The, another application of this in nature is that it is used in testing and research. It is used in testing and what? Research. Testing. Testing. Testing and what? Research. Those that are going into research. You want to test something, you want to research something. Let's say you want to check what is the acceleration due to gravity. You embark on the research, do your experiment and get. So it is used in testing and in research. It is used in physics education to demonstrate periodic and harmonic motion. And it is used in seismometer to detect and measure seismic waves and earthquakes. Yes. You can also use it to calculate or to be able to get your acceleration due to gravity. You are in a particular planet and you, let's say you enter Venus now. You want to get acceleration due to gravity of the Venus. Venus cannot be the same with the world Earth. Even on the moon, it cannot be the same with the Earth's own. The one of the moon, I think, is one over six of the one of the Earth. And so, if you are in the Venus, acceleration due to gravity there will not be equal to the one of Earth because Venus is different planet than uh, um, from Earth. Even though that Venus is Earth twin, it is not Earth, so to speak. It's just the twin. It's not Earth. So, so the ascension due to gravity is likely not going to be the same, so to speak. Okay? So this experiment is used to measure or what to determine ascension due to gravity on any planet you are into performing this experiment okay that is by the way so we have mentioned about four application in seismometer in physics education in testing and research and a measurement of acceleration due to gravity should theta be larger or smaller that is the next and why the theta is meant to be smaller the reason is because once you are displacing that meter rule it's a small um, way. If you displace it in small angle, the implication is that the rate it will be moving up and down, up and down, will not be too fast. It just be moving it gradually. And before you know what happened, you'll be able to get your exact time taken for that experiment. Yes. But if we displace it at a higher angle, it will move. It will be moving as fast as possible. And so you might not be able to get the exact time taken for maybe 10 oscillation, 15 oscillation, 20 as the case may be. So it should be what smaller so as to minimize error that will be encountered in that experiment. As I said, if they ask you why does it not pass through the origin, you say due to human and what experimental error encountered. And so that is the reason. Then don't forget to include your precautions, whether you are asked or you are not asked. Include your precautions. What are the possible precautions you can put in this experiment? Remember you measured the length of thread, 80, 70, 60, 
you so just stay remember so you measure it with what metaro and as you are measuring with metaro you should remember error due to parallax was avoided why measuring the length of the thread by what placing my eye vertically downward on the metal row i repeat again error due to parallax was avoided while taking my measurement of the thread by placing my eye vertically downward on the metal row while taking the reading are you getting it that is just that another another precaution you should not forget is about the angular displacement we'll talk about the angular displacement is going to be small so angle um you try to tell them that care was taken while displacing the metal row by ensuring that it is displayed at a very small angle so as to minimize error that will be encountered during counting and timing yes care was taken why why displacing the word metal row by ensuring that it is displayed at a very small angle so as to minimize the error that will be encountered during counting and timing during counting of number of oscillation and what timing so you tell them the error you what avoid it and how you avoided it yes very important then which other one should we talk about okay care was also taken care was also taken while performing the experiment by ensuring that the windows are what locked and the doors are locked to minimize air resistance or to avoid air resistance if you do not avoid air resistance air resistance can what have effects on the displacement either increase it or decrease it and so you need to work shut your work, windows and doors to make sure that air resistance are avoided also faulty equipments we are also avoided by, avoid by ensuring that the stopwatch and other equipment are in good state. You understand? So, all these precautions, don't forget to what, include them. Why? As, as you are done with everything. Then, conclusion. What are you trying to conclude? You know you are trying to check the relationship between time and what? The length and other uh, uh, parameters, so to speak. You try to tell them that in this experiment we say that the periodic time is directly proportional periodic time because the slope is positive is directly proportional to what l are you getting it is directly proportional to l so how is it directly proportional to l you remember that what directly proportional to root what l all over root what g so it is directly proportional to root l and it is also inversely proportional to what root g because the higher the time the higher the period the lower the what acceleration due to what gravity and the lower the period the higher the acceleration due to what gravity i don't know if you are getting what we are saying yes we noted that our care is in seconds 0.2 seconds right and so as it's 0.2 seconds you will be getting a particular g what if we have 0.2 second bar as the value of k or the, or the value of a right assuming we have it to be 0.3 the first one 0.2 and 0.2 second gave you g to be equal to 987 right then 0.3 income what are we going to get you say 0.3 will be given four shift pi square divided by what 0.3 squared and that will be giving and that will be giving you that it is what four three what nine so 0.2 gave you a higher number 0.3 gave you a lower number you see why we say that periodic time is inversely proportional to what g so to speak and it is directly proportional to what the length please don't forget this okay and so that is how we call 
it's a day in today's experiment if you find this video helpful please share it to all your classmates share it to all of them please subscribe all them to subscribe to encourage me to put more experiments for you yes any experiment we find difficult we will see how to get it without touching apparatus we'll see how to go about with the questions they ask them thanks once again for following us in our channel thank you see you next time